Hey friends, welcome to today's video. Today we are getting ready and playing with a brand new palette, a palette that I received in PR from NARS, and I was so excited to dig into this palette because I have really been loving NARS's eyeshadow lately. NARS's, is that how you say it? NARS, NARS's, I don't know. The formula is so exceptional. Um, I have been raving about the Claudette eyeshadow palette for the last several months, and not only is the shade range nice, but it's really the formula of those shadows that just get me. <laughs> so when I received this in PR, I was like, uh, we are going to do a video on this. I haven't dived into this. This is the Sun Seeker Summer Solstice Eyeshadow Palette. And I'm going to kind of read you the little info and I will insert some swatches and all of that. Um, as we dive in. So the palette is nine vividly warm shades, one sultry palette ignite eyes with a spectrum of rich bronze and golden tones. Designed to spark glowing dimension, pure pigments suspended in an innovative liquid binding system create rich high impact color in just one stroke. Swipe on, strike gold. It's $49, it's limited edition, and it's available at NARS um, Boutiques and at NARSCosmetics.com. Okay, so um, I did peek at this when I received it in the mail, but I didn't even swatch it. I didn't even touch the shadows. So this is truly kind of like a first impressions, but I do have very high expectations for this palette. This is what the palette looks like. It's got this gold detail on the front. It's super beautiful. I've been on their PR list, I don't know, maybe six months or so, and everything I receive is just wow. Like the packaging is so special. So um, this is beautiful. When I received it in the mail the other day, I was like, okay, I love this. I mean, they're neutrals, of course, and they're warm, but they are so beautiful. I do feel like every single shade in here is one that I would reach for often, with the exception probably of this real like red cranberry shade. I don't usually wear reds too often, um, but I could definitely work with this. But aside from that, every single shade that's remaining is something that I would use often. So that is special to me because I feel like you don't really get that in a lot of palettes. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm going to go ahead and prep my eyes. I'm using the Trish McAvoy um, Eye Base Essentials. I have the shade Bear. Also, let me know what you think about my new setup. <laughs> I kind of switched things around and I this is the first video that I'm filming with it. So hopefully I have the lighting right and I have the settings on my camera right and I can in focus because I got rid of my big huge monitor for now because my new camera I don't have an adapter that plugs into it. So I'm literally just like looking at my little window on my camera, hoping that I am in focus. I ordered some additional equipment that's going to help me, um, you know, see myself better when I film. But right now I'm just kind of crossing my fingers and holding my breath. I'm also going to run that underneath my eyes, just whatever's left on my brush. This primer has a little bit of a brightener. Well, I shouldn't say a little bit. It's actually quite brightening. Um, and now that I've got most of the product on the lid, I'm just taking whatever's left on my brush and running it down here just to brighten the under eye. Um, it's also going to help with uh, eyeliner or shadow that I put underneath there um, and work as a primer as well. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. This is what the palette looks like. I know I've already showed it to you, but it's so beautiful. I'm going to dig into this shade right here. It's the lightest like matte transition shade in the palette. I find that these, that well, maybe not these, but the other NARS shadows that I've used always translate a little bit deeper than they look. Um, and this already looks like it could be a good transition shade for me, but I have a feeling it's going to go on a little more rich than it looks. And I was right. It definitely does. It's so pretty. Oh my gosh. I'm just going to say it. I really feel like right now NARS's formula is my favorite in eyeshadows. The mattes are so silky and they have a good level of pigment. It's that nice, moderate to good pigment. It's not too much, so it's very easy to work with. But um, you do, you know, you get good pigment. You don't have to really like build and build just to get color to show up. It's so beautiful and silky. And I'm actually gonna switch brushes. I'm gonna go over to the 202 because I have a little more control over that. So I'm gonna load that brush up. So this actually goes on the skin a little more pink than it looks in the palette. It's definitely warmer on the skin than it looks in the palette. It is described as a warm palette, but all of all the shades, I would say that is the one that I would say has the least like warmth to it, but on the skin it has more than than you think. It's going on like a pretty pink brown. So pretty. Okay, next we're going to go in and we're going to build on top of that. So we're going to use this shade right here. It's like a saddle orangey matte brown and we're going to use the same 202 brush. And I'm gonna put that in the outer corner, but then I'm also gonna kind of bring it 
over onto the lid about halfway over. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my 201 and I'm just gonna use it without adding any product and I'm gonna kinda run it over what I've done just to soften everything a little bit, give the edges a nice like diffused effect. I will say the one shade that is missing from this palette is a brow highlight. There's nothing really I think you could use unless you like a lot of shimmer underneath the brow, which you guys know how I feel about that. I don't like it to be too shimmery underneath the brow. Ah, oh, so gorgeous. I'm just kind of running this brush and it's like just feathering and like ugh, diffusing, smoking out that crease into the brow. It's so pretty. Gorgeous, I love it. Okay, now there are quite a few fun sparkly shades in this palette and I'm really debating which one I wanna use. Let's see, hmm, okay. I'm gonna go with this one right here. It looks to be the brightest uh, shimmery shade. Now I wanna say this about the NARS shimmer uh, eyeshadows in my experience. Again, I haven't used this one yet, but in the most recent palettes, they are a very like silky, refined, like fine shadow. It's not chunky and glittery. Yes, there is a lot of sparkle, okay? It's definitely more than a sheen like I talk about, but I don't know, it just lays on the skin. So it looks to me like a cream or a liquid eyeshadow. So I'm gonna use my 203 and I'm just gonna kind of press this onto the lid. Okay, so that is actually a little more sheer than I thought. Like lots of sparkle, but the the color is a little more sheer. So I think, I'm thinking it might be a better topper, like to put on top of a color. Ooh, that's pretty though, very pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna switch gears and we're gonna go into this shade right here. This also has a lot of shimmer, but I can tell that it's more of a, um, let's see what they describe it as. Do they describe the actual shade formula here? It's different, it's not as glittery. It's more of like a shimmer. Okay, I can't find any information on here about the differences in the formula, but there's a clear difference in formula between this one and this one. This is very like uh, more glittery, and this one is definitely more of like a creamy shimmer, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna grab this one, the shimmer, and we're gonna pack it onto the inner corner first and over top that last shadow that I applied. Because I do want more like opaqueness in color, not just glitter and shimmer. Okay, that's yes, that's exactly what I want. It's a creamy shimmer, it's beautiful, it's warm, it's a very soft, pale, like peachy champagne color. So pretty. Okay, next I want to do a color to kind of bridge uh, the light and the darkness that we have. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna grab this shade right here. This is a really warm, like reddish bronze, and it also is the same formula as that shimmery, um, that creamy shimmer. So you have, basically you have mattes, you have, um, I wanna say two creamy shimmers, no three. Okay, I got I got it guys, I got it. Here's the skinny. So you have these two mattes, right? You have this one and then you have this one and I've done both of those in the outer corner. Then you have like a creamy shimmer shadow which you're gonna find here, you're gonna find it here and you're gonna find it in this like cranberry shade. Then you have some shadow toppers that have more glitter, maybe less color and those are gonna be here here and here. So it appears that you get three different formulas here. So we're gonna take that reddish bronzy shade and it actually goes on lighter than it looks, which is nice. It's a good little bridge between these two. And I'm just gonna kind of put that in the center of the lid. Okay, next we're gonna top it off with uh, one of these toppers. Okay, I'm gonna go in with this shade right here and this also is like a creamy shimmer as well. And I'm gonna lay it on top. We are layering a lot here. <laughs> I just wanted to play with this palette and see what I could create. Okay, pretty. And then last, I'm gonna take this gold topper and we're gonna top this just in the center of the lid to add extra glitter. Yeah, that lays so nicely, very pretty. Okay, and then the last thing that I wanna do is I wanna go back and intensify the outer corner. So I'm gonna take this brush with the darkest matte shade and we're gonna pop that right in the outer corner. So pretty. Nothing like a good warm neutral eye for summer. I cannot believe that we're almost in summer. I mean, holy moly. Okay, for my lower lash line, I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury Color Chameleon in the shade Amber Haze. This is a gorgeous, kind of like olive brown bronze shade. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. It's an eye crayon. So I love to use this on my lower lash line because it doesn't create a really like um, stark eyeliner line, it almost creates the illusion of like eyeshadow and liner in one. 
so pretty and this color is beautiful I think it looks good on all eye colors and I'm gonna run it from the inner corner to the outer corner because I'm not gonna do liner on my upper lashes so I'm gonna um, it's okay for my lower lashes to be a little bit more smoky and I'm gonna go in with this shade right here and we're gonna just kind of run that over it next let's curl and apply lash primer and mascara I would say this lash primer is my most repurchased product ever, probably. You know, I have a lot of favorites, uh, but I think in the category of lash primers, it's this one. And I do like the Lancome one. I tried that one recently um, when I did a collab with them. I think that was in December, and that's a good one. But gosh, I just, I have repurchased this guy, I don't even know, <laughs> over the last six or seven years so many times there's there's just not another option for me really okay next i'm going to go in with the tarte man eater mascara and we're going to layer that and it's time for me to replace this guy i did order a backup one of these through the sephora sale because i'm not doing liner on my upper lash so i'm really going to take the time to build um my mascara perfect okay i got a little bit too much lashes on the lower um let me see if I have a wand to clean those off. I don't like to do my lower lash line too heavy with mascara, but I think because this mascara is older and I need to replace it, it's a clumpier. And there we go. Perfect. Okay, let's move on to finish the rest of my face. So I'm going to go in and apply my bronzer. I'm going to use the NARS Cream Bronzer in Laguna. I love this product. It is such a beautiful product. I need to order the lighter shade. I know I said I was going to do that in my last video when I used this, and I haven't had a chance to. Um, this one works, but I am curious to see the next lightest shade on me. Because this, this one works for summer, but I think when I'm lighter, this is going to be too dark for me. And I'm just using the BK Beauty 107 brush and I'm just like pressing it. You guys, this brush makes cream, bronzer, or contour so easy. You just, you know, basically, I'm not going to do it again because again, I don't want to load too much up, but you basically just like tap the brush into the product. This product too is such a creamy pigmented product that you don't need too much. You don't really need to dig your brush in there. And then you just bounce it on the face. Oh, so gorgeous. <laughs> so funny, like how we get excited about like things like brown bronzer. <laughs> it just looks so good on the skin, so natural. And I love the tone of this with a tan on me. Okay, and then I'm gonna kind of run a little bit down my nose, just whatever is left. I haven't yet set my um, foundation with powder. I did apply foundation off camera, and today I'm using the L'Oreal Fresh Wear Foundation. Again, I'm the shade 460. The concealer that I was uh, had on today is the Armani Luminous Silk Concealer, and I am the shade five. I've been loving this guy. Now I'm gonna go and set, and I'm gonna use the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores, but I'm going to just kind of set the center of my face. I'm gonna try and avoid where I just applied that cream bronzer. I got a question the other day about if you use cream blush or bronzer, how do you apply powder before or after? And my tip is to apply powder after. And really when you go first, here's a good tip. I'm going to break it down for you guys. So when you go to a set, like if you've used cream products like I have, and now you're going in with powder, you know, you get, you load your brush up with powder. I always recommend like, you know, kind of bouncing it off into the lid or the back of your hand or a towel just so that you don't apply too much powder. Then you go into the face and apply it on the areas that you didn't really apply cream bronzer, right? So you get most of the product off on that area. Now, if you have oily skin or you find that cream products tend to move on you or they don't last all day, take your brush after you have, um, after you've you know set all the areas that don't have uh, cream products, and then just go over those areas really lightly. So basically, what you're doing is you are setting those areas, but because you've already gotten most of the product off in the other parts of the face, you're really not applying a whole lot of product on those areas. So that is my tip. Um, okay, for blush, we're going to go in with the Laura Mercier blush in the shade Ginger. This has been my go-to blush lately. It is so beautiful. It's just a matte, warm, apricot color. It's not too orangey. Um, I think this is a great product if you are like in a hurry and you don't want to apply bronzer and blush. This could. This is a good shade that's warm enough to almost be a bronzer dupe. Not, it's, a, it's a little warmer than a bronzer for sure, but if I'm not wearing bronzer, I'm wearing a warm peach blush. I'm not wearing a cool tone pink, okay? 
So I'm just gonna apply that on my cheeks. For lips, I'm gonna line my lips with the Persona Cosmetics Lip Liner. This is the shade Dusk. Um, this is the pinky shade. I really love this lip liner. It's very creamy. Um, it also is like, I don't wanna say it's sheer, cause it's not sheer, but it, it just, what, how should I describe it? It's not sheer, it has good pigment, but the way that it lays on the lips, it just allows you to really like sketch in the lips without getting a harsh liner. It's very buildable and blendable, which I like. I did have a little gloss on my lips first, the tower gloss, which I'm gonna go and apply next to. I like to not only just, not only line it, but fill it in too. Oh, I love this color, it's so pretty. Okay, for a lipstick, I have the Marc Jacobs lipstick in the shade Slow Burn. This is one of my favorite kind of pinky nude shades. It is a matte shade. So then I'm gonna top it off with a little bit of the Tower uh, 28 gloss in the shade Coconut. This is a, it looks very pink, but it goes on pretty sheer, so it's a great um, topper. Oh, so good. You know when you apply a product and it just makes you say out loud, like, oh, so good. That's a good product. So pretty. Oh, love it. So final thoughts on this palette. It's a really beautiful, warm summer palette. I think the formula of these shadows are equally as nice as what I have found in their other recent palettes, the NARS Claudette palette, especially that one has my heart. Um, as far as the color range, I wish that we had a deeper matte shade in here. I feel like it's a little difficult to create a lot of versatility in this palette. Well, I shouldn't say that because you do have this really red cranberry shade that we didn't use. That could obviously really change the look from a simple kind of pretty neutral warm eye look which is what I did so you can definitely kind of um, you have that versatility in the red and then you could also do this color all over but as far as like a dark sultry like dramatic look um, with a deeper shade I feel like we're we're missing a dark matte shade I wish it had that um, but if you are someone that likes softer warm neutral looks I think this would be a great palette if you were someone that likes red and a lot of warmth I think this would be a really great palette it. Um, that would be my only feedback is, you know, I wish it had a dark matte shade, but again, you know, it's a nine pan palette, like something would have to go for that to get in there. And would I really, then would I, what would it be missing if another shade went? Does that make sense? The NARS Claudette palette is one of my favorites because even though it only has six shades, I feel like you get a good range. You get a very deep matte shade. You get a pretty solid moderate to medium matte shade. You get um, some warmth. You also get some cool tones in there. It It is one of those palettes, and I've said it before, but it's one of those palettes that I received and opened it and thought, eh. And and then I used it and I was like, oh my gosh, I love this palette. So if you are contemplating between the two, I think the NARS Claudette would have my vote. But you know, if you're looking for, again, a warm, like, you know, pretty, like a very warm, pretty, soft, neutral uh, palette, definitely give this one a, a try. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Leave me all your questions, comments, feedback. Let me know what you think about this setup. I really hope this turns out well. I'll find out when I put the footage in Final Cut Pro. Um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.